Hello and welcome back to Toy Thursday with Johnny Tiger. The date is March 2nd, 2023. Yes, we are looking at the action figure from Diamond Select from the Dark Tower movie. I, I can't even call it a line because Diamond Select pretty much only made two action figures based on a Dark Tower movie and then called it quit. Uh, good thing too, because I mean, yeah, the movie was okay, because if you have not ever read the novels, but if you were a fan of the Dark Tower novels like myself, I mean, I didn't think the movie was horrible, but it was definitely disappointing, because those of us who love the Dark Tower novels have been waiting for a long time. For Dark Tower movies, and note I say movies because Dark Tower is long enough of a novel series that it definitely warrants multiple movies, not a one-off half-ass adaptation that's not even true to the story itself, not even faithful to the story itself. It glossed over so much of what made Dark Tower novels fun. Yeah, disappointing. I mean, yeah, okay, but I'm not here to criticize the movie itself. I'm just saying that as a Dark Tower fan, it wasn't a horrible movie, but it was a disappointing movie. So, when Diamond Select made action figures based on the movie, they made, yeah, Roland the Gunslinger, which was basically the hero of the story, and the man in black, which was basically the bad guy, the, the uh, villain of the story. They made the two action figures and the, they called it quit. They didn't make any anyone else. I mean, yeah, other than Jake, uh, the kid in the story, there's really not much they could have done. There's really, the, the movie was that bland. There's not that much going on in there that was all that interesting. And there's no other character that would really be worthwhile. But with that said, okay, with that said, uh, my personal feeling to the movie aside, I wanted Dark Tower action figures. I wanted Roland the Gunslinger. Yes, even though he was made by Diamond Select, so I knew that he probably was going to suck. Good thing that he doesn't. Not really. I mean, he's okay. He's not like one of the better action figures in my collection, but he's, he's alright. He's alright. Uh, and knowing that there was only two figures in this line, so they are not going to be able to really fit in with anything else. Just, you need to find a space to display those two figures together and just leave them alone. I knew that. Knowing that I didn't like the movie that much, that it was a disappointment, uh, knowing all that, knowing all that, I still went out of my way to track down Roland the Gunslinger because I really, really wanted him. Because Dark Tower, my all-time favorite novel, at least one of them. Like, I can, if I think hard enough, I can probably name some other books that I enjoyed more than Dark Tower, but it would be a struggle. Like, Dark Tower is very high on, the, on my list of, if you ask me what are my all-time favorite novels. And I knew, because that first movie sucked so much, uh, it's unlikely we'll ever get another one. And it's unlikely we'll ever see more Dark Tower action figures. So, since it's Roland the Gunslinger, even though he's not exactly like Roland the Gunslinger in the novel, I wanted him. Like, this was an action figure that, as soon as I saw Diamond Select making Roland the Gunslinger, I didn't need to look at the rest. I didn't need to read reviews or anything. I knew that he could be total crap, and I would still want him on my display, on my shelf somewhere, 
just for the sake that it's Dark Tower. And luckily, like I said, he's not that bad of an action figure. He comes with uh, a lot of accessories. He comes with uh, his two guns, of course. He needs his guns. He's a gunslinger. Uh, he comes with a horn of Eld, which, if you didn't pay attention to the novel, you wouldn't really know what that is. The horn of Eld is like a King Arthur relic that passed down to uh, Roland the Gunslinger. So I can't remember how it went down, but I think the idea was if he find him his way to the Dark Tower, if he climbed to the top top of Dark uh, Dark Tower and blow the horn, it was supposed to save history, change history, and save his pe people, or something like that. I, I it, it, the mythology in Dark Tower was a little bit wonky. And it's been a long time since I read those books, so I can't exactly remember what the Horn of Eld is supposed to do. But uh, the figure is it's about seven inches tall, uh, and from what I heard, definitely looks like the actor uh, Idris Elba, uh, who's a good-looking chap, from what I heard. I mean, Idris Elba is not really my cup of tea. I guess he's okay. He's been in a few superhero movies and stuff like that, and he did okay playing Roland the Gunslinger. But uh, you know, I definitely don't have the same kind of connection to Idris Elba as I would say Sylvester Stallone or uh, 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 Bruce Willis or those guys. Yeah, I know. I'm old school. So, that was my very lengthy preamble for today's video, because we are going to the third and final installment on why I buy some action figures and how I feel about them and all that stuff. Okay, we already looked at, uh, in the first episode, action figures that I didn't really want, but got in the end uh, for various reasons. And then the second episode last week, we looked at action figures that I wanted and uh, for various reasons. But this week, we're going to be looking at action figures that I really, really, really wanted. And Roland the Gunslinger is a good one to open the show with because, like I said, despite I didn't care for the movie, despite I knew that uh, Diamond Select probably wasn't a very good company to go with, uh, and various issues and reasons not to buy him. I wanted this figure because he is Roland the Gunslinger, and he's from some of my favorite books I ever read. Now. I have a lot of figures in my collection that are and were figures that I really, really, really wanted. I mean, in the end, it came down to money, right? Like, I don't have a lot of money. I am, well, honestly, a lot of time I'm really kind of straddling that poverty line, if you guys want to know. Um, so, when you don't have a lot of money to play with, you kind of limit your collection to things that you really, really, really want. Sometimes, if you don't want it enough, you'll have to pair it off the list to save some money. So that, that is uh, my way of saying that I have a lot of figures in my collection that I really, really wanted. And I still love them a lot for various reasons. Now, obviously, we can't show even half of them, or even two-thirds of them today. Otherwise, we'd be here all night. Right? Um, most of the time, when I buy an action figure, before I buy an action figure, I'll do a lot of research. I'll do a lot of, re read a lot of reviews, watch a lot of videos. Because you know, when you are totally blind, you don't know what you're getting. So you kind of want to minimize the chance of getting something that you don't like. 
Uh, so the only way to do that really is to read reviews and watch videos and talk to people about them. Now I don't have a lot of action figure collecting friends that I can talk to, so it comes down to reading a lot of reviews and watching a lot of videos and then make a decision. And does this look like a good action figure? Does it sound like something that I would enjoy? However, just like Roland the Gunslinger, there are characters or figures right, that, or figures of characters that I wanted so much because of uh, connections to the media that they were involved with. Like in the case of Gunslinger, Roland the Gunslinger, it was Dark Tower, the novels. So in those cases, I didn't even need to read reviews. I didn't need to look at videos. I just needed to know how much, where to get, and yeah, show me the add to cart button. This is called Impulse Buy, and the next figure I'm going to show you is another example of an Impulse Buy that I made on the spirit of the moment. Isn't that a gorgeous looking action figure? Well, sadly, this is not an action figure, it's a statue. Or, well, if you want to be a little bit more blunt, it's a figurine. Because while it is a uh, right size to display with uh, six or seven inch action figures, there's no articulation on this guy. He's <laughs> just, he, what you see is what you get. Uh, you, you can get, take the sword out of his hand, you can take him off the display base he's standing on, but, but there's nothing on him that will move. Okay. Who is this good looking guy in armor with a wolf style helmet and long sword, this medieval knight looking character? Then well, most of you probably wouldn't know this guy. Now, this guy comes from a Japanese series called uh, let's, let's see if I can do this without butchering it too badly. The original name is called uh, Garo, uh, Garo Monu no Kakui or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That basically translates as Garo the Golden Knight. Okay, so a uh, quick little introduction about Garo the Golden Knight. It's a Japanese uh, TV series, uh, kind of like uh, Kaiman Rider and uh, Ultraman. So in the story you have uh, knights that have the, uh, inherit these mystical armors and swords and they live among us as normal people but when they know that there's demons that are trying to hurt human beings, uh, like mysterious deaths or mysterious crimes in remote villages, these knights are dispatched uh, to go check out and uh, solve these crimes. And there are, usually there's a big battle, you know, they'll find the demon and then they'll, they'll have to summon their sword and armor and turn into uh, either the Golden Knight or the Silver Knight, uh, there's quite a few different suits of armor, uh, and they'll have to battle the demon. Uh, and there, this was uh, about four or five years ago when I first came across Garo, the Golden Knight uh, TV series, uh, being dubbed in. English on YouTube and after watching a couple of episodes of it I was hooked uh, because you most of you that been following me on this on the channel you know that I have a saber sword and blade and martial arts and you know I like mythological creatures and monsters and horrors and and, and knights in shiny armor. Do you know I really dig that stuff? Okay, so 
when it's a whole show about this mystical knight that travel the land and try to solve mystery and end up having to do this epic battle against monsters and demons. I was all for it. I mean, I'm usually not into a lot of Japanese shows or、uh, no matter if they were real people series or they were anime style series. I'm usually not really into Japanese stuff, but I was hooked on Garo, the Golden Knight. Um, and I want to uh, uh sort of digress a little bit and tell you guys a really cool story here regarding to my experience with watching、uh, Garo the Golden Knight. So just like a lot of Japanese、uh, based series, Garo the Golden Knight was built upon. Interesting visual aspect. So the story itself is very simple, right? A knight traveling around, and he hears about oh, there was a mysterious woman that uh, uh, can suck out people's soul in this village. If you annoy her, she'll suck your soul out,、uh, and, and and you'll never wake up. And then this knight will go investigate, and then find out that this woman is actually a, a minor demon. From hell, and then he has to deal with her、uh, without endangering the villagers. And usually, he's going to find some a maiden in distress, and he's going to have a bit of a, a romantic twist there. So yeah, like I said, the stories themselves、uh, were not very complicated.、Uh, the show's real strength was in the design of the martial art moves,、uh, the armors and swords. And the monsters and demons themselves. It's one of those shows that every episode there's a different demon. Every episode there's a different monster that that they need to deal with. Now, you can imagine that this was frustrating as a blind person to watch, because while I was really hooked on the show, I couldn't see what the monsters look like to appreciate. What I was watching or what I was listening. I mean, this kind of show, when you watch it,、uh, being blind, when you when you watch this blind and without description, it's like, okay, so I can follow the story. Oh, okay, sound like the woman transform into the demon, and now what? You hear a lot of sword slashing, clanking sound, and you feel the you hear the monster go raw 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 raw, making a lot of noise. And you, you're like, oh, oh, what happened? Oh, okay, I guess the monster's dead. Ah, darn it! I, I wish I knew what that monster looks like. Right. So, uh, I got so annoyed with that that I actually went onto Reddit, and I made a post on Reddit. Uh, in the I believe it was in the uh cartoon and anime. Series section of Reddit, and I made a post. I say, "Hey, look, I know this is something crazy to ask, I, but I am a totally blind person who just started watching Garo the Golden Knight, and I really love the series. But I would love it even more if I know what the knights look like, what the armor look like."、Uh, What are, what are some of the special moves that have been done in when they're fighting? And above all, I would love to know what the demons and monsters look like in every episode.、Uh, I think this would help me enjoy the show even more. Now, when I made this post, I really thought that I was going to get a lot of trolls and people telling me, "Well, if you're blind, then you shouldn't be watching this, and it, the show sucks anyway." You're, You just go watch something else or uh, uh, comments like that. To my surprise, the feedbacks were not only positive but very, very productive. There was a gentleman on Reddit who said, "Hey, that's cool.、Uh, I watched the entire show last year and." This will give me 
an excuse to go back and rewatch the show. So he did. He went back and rewatched the whole thing, and he wrote this super long post, responding to me on Reddit. And in this post was breaking up into every episode. Episode one,、uh, it was a demon that shaped like a really fat person without head, and in the place of the head is a giant mouth, and the, the demon is blue and with very saggy skin. Uh, and the knights basically look like a medieval knight、uh, with a wolf helmet and a long blade. And、uh, this is the move that he used on this demon in episode one. And every episode, I think there were like thirty-five, forty episodes, and he did that for every episode. So、uh, I was able to watch Geralt the Golden Knight、uh, following. That his description and that was so enjoyable. I wish that I know how to do screenshot on my videos. I could, I, I would have shown you guys a screenshot of his post. It's so amazing that someone actually did that. And、uh, while that was going on, there were other people that were chiming in and say, "Hey, this is so cool! I didn't know a blind person would watch this." Hey.、Uh, Uh, I I I want to add, yeah, the the silver knight is a little bit bigger than the golden knight. There were other people that were adding little comments like that that really helped me understand the visual aspect, the designs in the、uh, show while I was watching it. So yeah, I don't know if any of you that answered my post on Reddit would ever see this video, but here is a big heartfelt thank you. You made it so enjoyable. So back to the Garo Golden Knight figurine. After I watched Garo the Golden Knight, and almost by pure coincidence, I was browsing around on an eBay store. I I wasn't looking for Garo. I was looking for、uh, an alien action figure actually, you know, of all things. And after I added the action figure to my shopping cart, I thought, well, I should. Look and see if this guy got other action figures that I can combine shipping with, because this guy was in Japan, so shipping was a little bit expensive. So I wanted to get the most out of my money, and I saw that he had listed a Garo, the Golden Knight,、uh, action figure. That this is what he called it, an action figure. So I didn't know it was going to be a immobile statue. Or a figurine. I didn't know how big it was going to be. I oh, I saw it was Garo the Golden Knight, thirty-five dollar, brand new. Well, I was so impressed with Garo, the Golden Knight、uh, series, and what、uh, I just mentioned to you guys about my experience on Reddit, that I said, you know what, just for that, just for the sake of watching the show and、uh, those people who describe. The show to me. I am going to get me a Garo, the Golden Knight. I don't care if he's big or small or good or bad or whatever. I'm going to get a Garo, the Golden Knight figurine,、uh, just for this momentous experience. So I did. So this was definitely another impulse buy that I was not looking for him, but as soon as I saw him being listed, I was like, I need this guy. I need this guy. I want this guy. I don't care if he sucks, or I don't care which company makes him. I don't care if he's seven inches tall or two inches tall. I want this guy. Now, if someone like Neca or Metfallen would see fit to make an entire line based on Garo the Golden Knight with articulated figure. And all the demons and monsters. Oh, I would be so happy. I would probably go broke, but I would be so happy. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, as not all impulse buys turn out with a happy ending, like our story with Roland the Gunslinger and Garo the Golden Knight. The next figure I'm going to show you. Actually, the next figures I'm going to show you. Were 
things that I wanted, I really, really wanted, but uh, probably shouldn't have gotten. Speaking of probably shouldn't have gotten, let's start with a big one. I had to totally move things around to make room for this this guy. This is、uh, the Apatosaurus dinosaur, made、uh, by Mattel in the Jurassic World. I believe it was the Legacy line. They have so many different lines in the Jurassic Park, Jurassic, Jurassic World、uh, toy series that it's confusing. But okay, suffice to say, this is a big dinosaur, and this is not my only big dinosaur. I, we we have seen a couple of them. On the list、uh, before in the earlier Toy Thursday, you guys. I hope you guys can see this, right? This guy is really hard to to, to、uh, photograph and film because he is so big. But I have him standing in front of my microwave, and he basically blocks the entire microwave. And he's from head to tail, he is almost the length of the counter. This guy is huge. Uh, now, I'm a dinosaur buff. I, I'm not even going to lie about it. So when you tell me that someone's making a dinosaur and a big dinosaur that's going to display pretty well with my six or seven inch action figures, there's almost no way that I'm going to pass it up. There's almost no way that I'm going to skip it. I, I'm going to rush out there and buy it. It. it I'm that. I feel that strong about dinosaur action figures. Now, if they are not going to fit in with my collection, now obviously I'm not going to touch them. But this guy, right, is so big that yeah, he's still a little bit small、uh, for a full-size dinosaur, comparing in the standing next to a six-inch action figure. But he gets the job done. Okay, let me give you guys a quick size comparison here. Here is、uh, our trusty Captain America that we、uh, I love to use for size comparison on these videos because Captain America, you know, he's like a he's like a really buff human, but he's not giant. He's like more or less normal size, right?、Uh, so usually when I'm trying to measure things, I use guys like Captain America or Spider Man as a really good marker and. I hope you guys can see this on the、uh, screen. Captain America <laughs> barely come up to the top of the dinosaur's leg. At the top of his head, barely come up to that di dinosaur's underbelly. So this dinosaur is huge.、Uh, it, it displays fine with the six inch. And if you collect three inch figures, oh boy, this would be perfect for those. So. Do I do I love、uh, do I like this action figure? I love this action figure. I mean, I, I just love big dinosaur action figures. Did I really really want this action figure? Yes, I did. Did I rush out there and buy it? Yes, I did. But I'm coming to think that I probably shouldn't have. Why? Because this thing takes up a lot of room. You, there, you can't put it, her, him. You can't put it on a regular shelf. The only way to display this is at, at the top of something, on top of something, like standing on top of the uh, uh, bookshelf or standing on top of the、uh, a coffee table or something like that. Like, look at how wide it is from head to tail. It takes almost up the entire counter here in the kitchen. So, yeah, it's great. I really want it, but、uh, I'm having a heck of a time finding a place to display it. And like I said, this is not even my only giant dinosaur. Right now, I have like six giant dinosaurs in my collection, and、uh, so trying to find ways to display them is getting tougher and tougher and tougher.
Now, let me show you guys an action figure that I really, really, really wanted, but got the wrong figure uh, by accident. Speed line is very tough sometimes because you can't tell immediately what you are getting, uh, especially when the description is vague. And in this case, the description was not wrong, but I did not realize that I was getting the wrong figure, regardless. In 2001-2002, the company called SOTA came out uh, with some Street Fighter action figures that were the best, like ever, the best of its time. I, I, I would say, if, even if you compare them to action figures today, I don't think anyone's ever produced better action figure action figure, uh, uh, Street Fighter action figure uh, than SOTA. I mean, you can maybe argue that Storm's Collectible does better, but honestly, Storm Collectible, they're nice, but they're, well, number one, they're super expensive, like $100 figures. Number two, they're import. Number three, their construction is a bit iffy. They have some weird material choices. Uh, and yeah, they're, they're like, their size and scale can be really, really weird. Um, but yeah, SOTA were making Street Fighter action figures, and they were like $10 each, and they were super, super nice, super articulated, come with a lot of heads and hand options, and even energy effect when uh, the characters have uh, energy-based um, attacks. They were so good, okay? And in wave one of Street Fighter, the figure that I wanted the most but didn't get was Sagat. Mr. Sagat, the Muay Thai fighter, giant Muay Thai fighter that have he owe his attack based on tigers. <laughs> yeah, like you, you already know why I wanted Sagat. Why did I not get him? Well, because in 2001-2002, I was going to, I was trying to finish school, uh, and uh, money was really, really, really tight. So I had to pick and choose uh, of figures I got, and I never dreamed that SOTA would go bankrupt one day. I never dreamed that it would be difficult to get a Sagat action figure later, and this falls in line with what I talked about before. A lot of people, non-collectors especially, have this idea that, hey, you know, you don't need to get it now, you can always get it later. You don't understand. You don't get it now, if you want to get it later, you might be spending $400 rather than $10 now, right? These things go crazy on the secondary market. So long story short, I spent almost 20 years trying to track down an affordable Sagat action figure from SOTA's Street Fighter line. And I put, I stress the word affordable because it went stupid. Like you can go on eBay and take a look right now. Right? If you want to get a SOTA Street Fighter Sagat figure on eBay that is not broken, uh, you would be looking at anywhere between $200 to $2,000. I'm not even fooling. There were some that selling for $2,000. And like I said, these were $10 back then. <laughs> okay? So, one day, while I was looking on YouTube, uh, on eBay, I saw hard to find Sota Sagat action figure still in its original box, sixty dollar. You can imagine the electric shock that went through me. Yeah, I didn't even bother to send it, send a picture to my friend and ask him, does, it, does it, this look like the right figure? Does it look like Sagat and you know, anything wrong with it? which I usually do. I, before I buy a figure uh, off eBay, I usually uh, send a picture to a few of my friends and get them to tell me what's going on there. In this case, 
I went with a description made by Sota, Street Fighter, Sagat, still in its original box. Added to the card, pay sixty dollar for the figure and thirty five dollar for shipping, and I could barely contain myself for the next week waiting for this to arrive. And when it arrived, it was like the biggest WTF moment of my life. Yeah, it is Sagat. Yes, this was made by Sota. Yes, Street Fighter. But this was not the Sagat I was looking for. I did not know that Sota. Did two、uh, rotocast, ten-inch rotocast figures.、Uh, in case you don't know what rotocast is, it's hollow. This is. Yeah, I can squeeze this.、Uh, this is hollow inside. This is the entire thing is hollow inside. And this, this, and and ten inches tall. It it doesn't fit in with anything I collect. I didn't know that they made these. I didn't know the soda. While doing the regular Street Fighter line, also made 10-inch rotocast figure of some of the characters, and Sagat was one of them. I had no idea what I was getting. I thought I was getting the Sagat from the regular Street Fighter line, not this big honking chunk of hollow plastic. Ah, frustrating. <laughs> Sadly, things like that happen.、Uh, luckily, not all the time, but way too often for my comfort. You have no idea how much money <laughs> that got wasted because I got something that wasn't what I had in mind. And this next one, unfortunately, this next one I can't even blame it on uh, 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 the. Bad description or a lack of knowledge. This next one I walked into willingly,、uh, but totally, totally regretted. This is another action figure that I really, really wanted, but got a version of it that I totally hate even today. This is Broly. From the Dragon Ball toy line,、uh, Dragon Ball series. Now, I'm not really a Dragon Ball fan. I watched most of it. It was okay,、uh, something to watch when I was a teenager. But when I was a teenager, I was into Marvel superheroes. My younger brother, Peter, was the one into Dragon Ball. He he loved Dragon Ball designs. He loved the character. He loved the crazy. Spiky hair and、uh, weird baggy、uh, uniforms and and the, the super crazy energy attack and fireballs and and all that stuff. He he loved that stuff. No, I I wasn't really into it. But there was a character、uh, from Dragon Ball. Like of the entire Dragon Ball series, there was only one character that I wanted. In action figure form that I liked enough to say I would love an action figure of that guy, and that guy was Broly, the legendary Super Saiyan. I mean that really doesn't mean a heck of a lot because you know that it's almost like everyone who's anybody in Dragon Ball can turn into a Super Saiyan, uh, uh, a, 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 a golden-haired, super powerful. Muscular ver- version of themselves, but originally Broly was the legendary Super Saiyan. He was like unsurpassed. He was the only one. He was like an incredible Hulk with golden spiky hair that can destroy a galaxy with his own hand. Okay, that's how crazy powerful the guy was, and. He just got one of those designs that you kind of like. Whoa! Okay, I I want this guy on my shelf. He's so muscular and cool looking. 
So when I was given a Dragon Ball action figure by my good friend Ian and Darren, it was a Son Goku in Super Saiyan form that I talked about before. I decided, okay, well, Son Goku need guys he can fight on the shelf. I can't just have Goku uh, alone. Now I need to get some Dragon Ball action figures. So I thought, well, who do I like in Dragon Ball? Well, Broly, that's like the only person I like in Dragon Ball. So I really wanted a Broly action figure to display with my son Goku action figure. Now, here came the hard part, because I don't collect Dragon Ball. So I don't really know what Dragon Ball figures are good made by which company. So I thought there were two choices I could go with. There was a Broly action figure made by uh, Figure Arts Bandai Japan. And it was like $160 US, which would be crazy in Canadian dollars. Right? So I thought, oh, well, I really like the character, but I don't like Dragon Ball enough to want to spend that money. So I looked at the other option, which was made by Bandai America and Jax Pacific. And this one was only like uh, $30, something like that. I thought, well, might be okay. $30 is not cheap. Uh, it's like normal action figure price range. And I mean, how bad could it be? Right? It's Broly. It, it can't be that bad, right? It, it looks like it's the same, it's the right size. It looks like it's pretty big. Uh, going by the description and some of the YouTube videos I watched. So I decided, okay, what the heck? We are going to go with the cheap option, the $30. And I ended up with this guy. Now, you might say, what's wrong with him? Well, there's so much that's wrong with him. I don't even want to just stand here and talk about all of it. Number one, the joints barely move, like the head moves, but oh, there's no, hardly any waist crunch. The leg is restricted, excuse the hand, by the skirt, the, this weird skirt he's wearing, the leg can't move. And look at the ugly arm. I, okay, let me bring him closer. Excuse my finger. Okay, I hope you guys can see this. The arms are so ugly. Like, I don't know what's going on with his bicep. Those are not biceps. Those look like someone's leg muscles. Like, muscles don't, arm muscles don't look like that. Not even in comic books, okay? Uh, the, this is just like, really, and the joints are so ugly on this figure. I've seen some ugly joints on action figures, but this, this is like someone who says, Okay, here's an arm and here's a body and just mush them together. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if there's a giant gap in the shoulder. It, it's just for kids anyway. They won't care. This does not look good. This action figure, it's... Yeah. Yeah, like... I... I spent $30 for this guy and I feel ripped off. Like, I feel like... This is a figure that even if it was 12 bucks, I wouldn't have wanted it if I knew how poorly uh, constructed this was. Uh, so sad. It's a, a character, the only character that I really wanted out of the entire Dragon Ball uh, universe, and it turned out like this. Now, I know some collector is going to say, well, you did that to yourself, right? Because Jack Pacific, they know how to make wrestling action figures, but no one ever say they make really good action figures. And uh, Bandai America, yeah, ugh, that's just disgusting. So you, you've been the collector long enough, so you still went with Jack Pacific and Bandai America. So you brought that on to yourself. Now, in my own defense, that's not true, because there are other Dragon Ball characters that Jack Pacific and Bandai America made 
in the same line as that lousy looking broly that turned out fantastic let me show you guys one really quick this wasn't an action figure that i really wanted this was a more like a, a chance i just chanced upon it and decided to get it because it was on sale but this is a good looking action figure from the same company that made that horrible looking broly action figure this is uh, the character Vegeta in his Super Saiyan 4 transformation uh, look uh, from Dragon Ball GT show. Uh, and it's made by the same company, but look at this guy. This guy is good looking. This is a good looking action figure. Every fur on his body, the, the furry texture and the musculature, his hair, and his joints work really good. So why couldn't they do this with Broly? There's just no reason, right? Like this is like uh, heaven and earth different. It's a, this action figure is a figure that I would really like. I, even though I didn't care for the character, I didn't care for the show, but this is a, this is a good looking, cool looking action figure. And well made. The joints work great. So what the heck? Guys, what the heck with that Broly? I don't know. I don't know. I, I wish someone would tell me. Now, I want to end this video on a high note. Because after all, we are talking about action figures that I really, really wanted. And so far, it has been kind of depressing, right? So I'm going to show you guys three more figures. Uh, and these were figures that I really, really really wanted for various reasons and i just love them to death uh, even after owning them for so many years this crazy looking buff a very buff very chunky character uh should be very familiar if you are into marvel superheroes and x-men this is a villain uh called omega red Omega Red uh, is a Russian mutant, a super weapon made by the Russian government. He is a giant of a man with a metal tentacle that can come out from his palm and he can uh, ensnare people with and uh, do all kinds of crazy things to them. He's also uh, able to produce a cloud of blood, uh, poison spores that would uh, kill a lot of normal soldiers, uh, normal humans, if they get too close to him. He is a walking, uh, killing machine made by the Russian government. At least that's his backstory. We are going to talk about Omega Red more in detail in the future, but I want to tell you guys a little bit of his, of his uh, background because this was my first uh, experience with the X-Men. Let me take you back to 1992. I was 10, 11 years old, and I didn't know anything about Marvel superheroes or X-Men or all this stuff. That I was in Taiwan at that time. Uh, most of what I knew were Asian pop culture, like Ultraman and Grandizer and uh, uh, ninjas and samurai and Voltron, uh, all those stuff. Um, I remember one time my mom went traveling. I can't remember if she went to the US or she went somewhere. And she brought me back some action figures that she saw in the store. And in, uh, I think it was, I think it was, US, maybe Hawaii. And the first figure I opened was Wolverine. Now, while Wolverine is kind of cool, but he's kind of small. It is a small, hairy looking dude in, with claws on his hand. So I was, okay, I was interested, but I wasn't like totally wowed. Because I didn't know what he who he was. I didn't know 
any of his backstory. I just going by the design of the character, and honestly, it didn't really look like much. Uh, so I put him down. I thought, okay, this is cool. I wonder where this guy's from. Where I wonder where, which show he's from. What his story? Is he a good guy, bad guy? What does he do? Ah, so I opened the second package, and in that package was this bulky giant man with a、uh, weird implant in his face and like the coolest looking long hair, and 